privilege to invite speakers from various parts of the world to talk to a Kathmandu audience. This year we're honored to have one of our very own, Professor Gautam Bhazacharya. As you well know, he'll be delivering the 2018 Mahesh Chandra Lecture, which is entitled Nepal Sambat and Vikram Sambat, Discerning Original Significance. Given the importance of the monsoon in the agriculture calendar of South Asia, it is most apt that a lecture that deals with aspects of the rainy season should be delivered in the middle of the, this unusually heavy spell of downpour we've experienced for the past few weeks. Uh, but that is something that uh, Professor Vazachari will be talking about in the lecture, and that's what you're here for. So I will stop here and uh, welcome you once again to the lecture. But first, can I please request you all to please turn off your mobile phones or put it on silent mode. Uh, it is a very intense lecture, as you can imagine, and we do not want to disturb others or to be disturbed by others. I would also like to mention that we will not have a Q&A after this session. Uh, this, is, this has been the custom that we've followed regarding the National Review Lecture, but then we do have a, a short uh, tea reception outside and you can interact with him uh, with your concerns uh, at that period. Uh, with that, I'd like to request uh, Professor Nirman Mantholadir, who is the Chair of Social Science Bar, but also a personal friend of Professor Vazatsadi, to formally introduce the speaker. Thank you, Professor Namaste. Welcome to the Mahesh Chandra Vaigni Lecture 2018. Distinguished guests, friends, and colleagues, on behalf of Social Science Baha, I would like to welcome you all here to Mahesh Chandra Vaigni Lecture in honor of one of the most eminent historian, Professor Gautam Bajabhajachari. This is the 16th Mahesh Chandra Vaigni Lecture which was instituted in 2003 in the presence of the late Regimi himself. The first, the first one lecture was delivered by the late Dr. Harku Gurung. For today's lecture, we have a distinguished historian, Sanskritist, and art historian of South Asia. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce Professor Bajachari, who is a professor emeritus at the Department of Art History in the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Back in 2013, I had the privilege of introducing him at the 65th Social Science Bar Lecture Series at Yelamaya Kendra. He delivered an enlightening lecture on revisiting the concept of prana in Nepali and Indian art. Born in an illustrious and scholarly Buddhist Newar family in 1940, which runs pews Bersier Onsadale, the Ayurvedic clinic. His father, his grandfather, Durga Bajabhajachari, was an Ayurvedic physician by profession. And his father, the late Pandit Dibya Bajabhajachari, is the author of over dozens of publications, such as on Mahayana, such as Dharma Sangra Kosh, Aryatara Swatya Sangra, and Pragya Parmita Pitharita Sangra. Professor Bhaja had no formal schooling. His father taught him Sanskrit. Later on, he went to join Samsonan Mandala of the late Pandit Nairas Panta, who taught him to read an ancient inscription and iconography along with Dr. Mahesh Raj Pant and Professor Dinesh Raj Pant. At the same time, his uncle, the late Tanabhaja Bajachari, the eminent historian and epigraphist, was his inspiration. Though Professor Bajachari and I grew up in the same neighborhood, 
Masangali, Machandra Bahal, and Asan in the city of Kathmandu, we never ran into each other. For the first time, I heard his name from his uncle, Dhanabhaja Bajachari, who was my senior colleague at the Institute of Nepal and Eastern Studies in Anas, Tirwan University, in the early 1970s. Later, I came upon his work on Hanuman Dhaka, Raj Darabara, <coughs> published by Inas, which was translated into English by Father Ludwig Stiller, under the title The Introduction to Hanuman Dhaka, published in 1975 as an average version. <coughs> Being a disciple of Pandit Nayaraj Panta, groomed by Dhanabharja Brajachari, advised by Mary Slosser, including his own academic and innovative bent, he studied art history at Claremont Graduate University, California, and went on to do a PhD in South Asian languages, literature from University of Wisconsin, Madison. Distinguished Sanskritist and scholar of South Asian languages, art and culture. Professor Prajachari is a professor emeritus at the Department of Art History in the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where he taught history of South Asian art for over 23 years before his retirement. Further to his teaching, he has made outstanding contribution to the knowledge of Nepali art history while assisting and collaborating with Mary Slusser and Pratap Aditi Paul. Now, I would like to share with you some of his outstanding publications. <coughs> Nepali Seasons, Rain Ritual. Frog Him and Rain Babies, Monsoon Culture and Art of Ancient South Asia, Himalayas, an aesthetic adventure, it is with his co-author, and Western collection of Indian miniature at the Eleven Jam Museum of Art, a detailed study of selected works. Having introduced Professor Bajatari briefly, now let us listen to him for his textual and visual details about Nepal summit and become summit and their correlation. Thank you very much indeed for coming over here. Despite the traffic hurdle because of the old event regulation for vehicles due to the Beanstack summit. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Welcome formally. Professor Bajatari, to speak to us. Would you please? Thank you, Nirmal. I know very well that the subject of my talk is in Nepal Sambhat and Bikram Sambhat, not Gai Yatra. I'm not trying to entertain you. But without understanding Gai Jatra, without careful observation of Gai Jatra, you may not be able to understand Nepal Sambhat, you may not be able to understand Bikram Sambhat either. We will discuss in detail why Gai Jatra is so important to understand Nepal Sambhat and Bikram Sambhat in detail. I would like to thank Nirmal, Deepak Thapa and many other important people of social science Baha who helped me to come to this place and give this lecture. Without their help, I would not be standing here. In particular, I would like to thank Dr. Rajendra Pradhan. He the one who initiated this lecture. I met 
Maharaj Chandra read me many times in Indrachok. Close to Indrachok, there was a Marbadi restaurant where you can get many sweets and a, a kind of Nepal, uh, a Indian um, soup called Chala Chola. Cha yeah, that was so good that I used to visit that Marbadi restaurant uh, quite often, and uh, Dr. Mayerson, the Rekimi, also there. So we used to have long discussion, and he always insisted me that Gautam, just criticizing other, I was a member of some sort of mantra, so just criticizing other is not good. It is time to start writing books, volume after volume. I wish I, he was here. I do have some volumes of the book. <laughs> so, I'm so glad to present this Mahesh Chandra lecture today. The key word of my lecture today is cow calendar. Yes, cow calendar. We have academic calendar. We have fiscal year, fiscal calendar. But we are talking about ancient people, the cow herds, prehistoric people. You, you people must, must have heard about the Gopal or Bangshabalis or Chronicle, regularly talk about the Gopalas, who were the cowherd and controlled Kathmandu Valley, right? Gopala Vamsabali is called Gopala Vamsabali because very earliest reference to the king of Nepal is Gopalas. Although all these chronicles refer to these cowherd rulers, we don't know much about it until now. Now we do have some some reason to believe that we still know we still practicing same ritual that they practiced many many years ago, and this is why my lecture is complex. We are talking about prehistoric culture. There was a time. There was a time before Hinduism and the Buddhism, even before Vedic literature was composed. And you need to imagine, we need to imagine how, how it was. The, for cow herd people, the most important thing is cows. And green vegetation for the cow. Right? So their cow calendar was quite different from our calendar. Gai Jatra is the last day of cow calendar. If you observe Gai Jatra, you will see many varieties of things. First, you will see babies turning into Krishna. Did you see here the, uh, the baby carried by his father? He is Krishna because he carries fruit and he is wearing peacock feather. Right? Why Krishna? What Krishna had to do in Gai Jatra? Right? But there is a reason. Eight days after Gai Jatra, eight or nine days after Gai Jatra, there is Krishna Ashtami. Right? As a matter of fact, Krishna was born not on Ashtami, not on the eighth day of the Padra, Padra Krishna, but exactly on the day of Sapadu, which is Gai Jatra. In ancient South Asia, people did not, did not celebrate the birth of their son and the daughter immediately after birth because the baby may die or mother may die. What's the reason of celebrating as having birthday? So they wait until either six days or eight days. Only after six days, if the baby managed to survive six days and eight days, they know that that baby will survive. Right? So they celebrated Kumara's birthday, Skanda Kumara, celebrated on the day of Shithi, 
CT six day. Although, although Kumara was born six days ago, but they celebrated his birthday only six days after. And this is why uh, Kumara's birthday is known to Nawar as a city Naka, which means the festival of six day. But in ancient time, it, this is classical period. But in Vedic period, we know that eight days more important. So I have a I have a theory that Krishna actually was born not on Krishna Ashtami but eight days before Krishna Ashtami. <coughs> and you will see in some places, Gaijatra is celebrated quite different way. Did you see the scarecrow like a figure? You will see that kind of scarecrow like figure in Bhaktapur Gai Jatra as well. How the our scarecrow is related to Gai Jatra is another, another question. Usually, just behind the scarecrow, they carry an image of their ancestor, father, mother. This is, this is figure. As my research indicates that scarecrow is actually Newar grandfather, Newar deity. Newar did not have the concept of God. Believe me, Newar did not have the concept of God. The concept of God is introduced by Sanskrit speaking people. This is why in Newari there is no word for God. God is so important to us. But what is the Nevari word for God? Dya, yes. But Dya is there from Sanskrit word Deva. Sanskrit speaking people came to Nepal during Lichivit period, maybe even a little bit earlier. What, what was the word for God before Lichivit period? They didn't have one. But they worshipped their ancestor as divine figure. And this is why Indra is their Aju. Every, sometime, even Buddha, Buddha is their Aju. Aju means divine, ancestor is their divine, divine spirit. I will, I will show you more about, more about this scarecrow. Scarecrow is the protector of Nevars. <coughs> I'm talking about really early time, okay? If, if you are a Newar, you, you know exactly how Mapuja looks like, right? Mapuja is the ritual celebrated on the first day of Nepal Sambhat. It is actually New Year celebration. For this Newar ritual, but for this Nepal Sambhat New Year's Day ritual, most important object is a fruit, citrus fruit, called Tashi. It's a big, big fruit. It doesn't taste good. But you have to have, you have to have that citrus fruit. Right? Why that citrus fruit is related to New Year is a question. I, I would like to discuss on this citrus fruit, Sanskrit name for citrus fruit, the symbolic significance of citrus fruit as well. Another important thing that you have to have for the New Year celebration is this week. Sutlo, ita in Nawari. Right? Really, it has to be thick and long. In Sanskrit text, written by Nepalese, in Sanskrit text, the Sanskrit name of this week is Anamaka. Anamaka. Close to Anamika. Nameless. In Nevai we call we call it Keluita, but in Sanskrit same Keluita is known as Anamaka, no name. Nameless. Why it is called nameless is another question.
Gai Yatra is cow festival for sure. Children turn into, they wear either a headgear decorated with cow mask, they turn into calf, and they walk around on the street together with real calf. Right? Really interesting feature. If you read medieval period stories, Purana, uh, Puranic story, we will be very much confused. The real, the real significance of our festival and the cultural aspect is hidden by stories. Sanskritized people, Sanskrit-speaking Sanskrit people and Sanskritized people are very good making, making, a, a, making a story. They don't need to learn what is the reality. They can imagine something and tell you a story. Because as I was a Sanskritist, I can make hundreds of stories for you which is very easy. And people get very much fascinated with that story. And if you follow that story all the time, you never will be able to, never be able to find out the reality. This is a kind of cow calendar. In 2016, October, October 30, I think, October 30 was Mapuja. Mapuja was on October 30. Then Gaijatra was August 7, I can hardly see. I can hardly see India. Can you see August? No, August 7. Uh, August, October 31st is Mapuja. August 7 is Gaijatra. So the time difference is 280 days. Time difference is 280 days. Okay? This period of time, October 31st to August 7, this period of time, known to ancient people a period of gestation, period of pregnancy. Any problem with my mic? No? Period of pregnancy. Vedic people call this period of time as, as sam vatsa ra. Sam means excellent, Vatsa means calf or baby, Ra means endowed with. The period endowed with excellent baby. As a matter of fact, it is period of pregnancy. Uh, and then this word, Sambatsara, regularly used as equivalent to 10, ten months. Indra, the sky goddess conceived Indra for 10 lunar months, then Indra was born at the end of Sambhatsara. Or Kumara was born at the end of Sambhatsara. Kumara was born after 10 months. Same text used either uh, during 10th month or Sambhatsare at the end of Sambhatsara. And we also know that Frogs start croaking at the end of Sambhatsara, at the end of gestation period. Frogs start croaking on August 7. The weather has been changed. Climate has been changed for sure. In Vedic literature, Vedic literature which is composed around 1500 BC to 700 BC, around that time, monsoon rain begins around August 7th, quite, quite late. August 7th is Gaijatra. Gaijatra time, monsoon season is almost over. Not, it is not raining anymore, right? But around 1500 BC to 700 BC, this is just the beginning of monsoon. And they describe that 
at the end of summer syrup, uh, frogs start cooking. August 7, frogs just start, started croaking. I have been away from Kathmandu a long time. What, what, time of the, what period of time croaks start croaking in Kathmandu now? Huh? July. 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 First week of July. 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 Mm, That's a good thing to know. Right. So, the season has been changed for sure. Oh, by the way, I forgot to turn off my mobile. Where is my mobile? Oh, okay, I got it. I found something else. <coughs> frog. I gave a lecture on frogs in New York, and one of the audience liked it so much that Gautam used to have this frog. I carry this frog all the time. Whenever I carry this frog, always good thing happened to me. <laughs> Does he <it> croak? Huh? <laughs> Does he croak? Does he croak? I do hear him croaking <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, this is, we are talking about cow calendar. So the question is, who is, who is conceiving? On the day of a Mapuja, some, around Mapuja, somebody conceiving it and giving birth to babies around Gaijatra. Actually, it is a cow who conceived a cow. This is a practical ritual. Mapuja and Gaijatra was a practical ritual. A cow conceived around Mapuja and then give birth to calf on Gaijatra. Yeah, yes, I know that a cow can conceive any time of the year, right? But these ancient people, these Gopalas, thought that if a cow conceived around Kartik, the cow will be giving birth to a calf at the beginning of monsoon. So that mother cow has plenty of vegetation, green vegetation, and baby cow has plenty of vegetation as well. This we know from Vedic literature. This is the things. We, not from New Orleans literature. New Orleans did not write anything. This Gopalas did not write anything. Right? But these Gopalas were not much different from the cowherd cow her of India. Because their agriculture closely based on monsoon-based agriculture. I call it monsoon-based agriculture. If there is no monsoon, their cows start to death. No vegetation. Right? These cowherd share nightmare and the dream of the nightmare and dream of Indian, Indian cowherd. As a matter of fact, even now, we share nightmare and a dream with India. We share all divinity with India, not because of India's influence, because we have shame, shame, nightmare and a dream. Nightmare is doubt. And we, we know from Gopala Bhamsabali and other Bhamsabali, almost every century there is a huge, huge drought. People die. That is nightmare. And so, regular, regularization, 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 monsoon is the main, main focus of the ritualist. They perform they perform a ritual, Vedic people perform a ritual called Gavam Ayana, which literally means cow's walk. The ritual called the walk of the cows. Right? Actually, the Gai Jatra is the end of that ritual. The main purpose of that cow, cow ritual is regularization regularization of monsoon. 
Although all these things are described in the Vedic literature, this is not Vedic for sure. These Vedic people came from Afghanistan. Monsoon rain doesn't lead to Afghanistan. Their agriculture cycle is quite different. In Afghanistan, agriculture is based on snow melt, not monsoon rain. Snow melts, the ground, the ground becomes fertile, and then they start planting in spring. Cows give birth to calf in Afghanistan around spring, not during the rainy season. Okay, and so when we find difference to monsoon, monsoon birth of the calf, all these things that in, in Rig Veda, it just happened to be found in the Vedic literature, but actually they learn all these things from local people. All right? So, the period from Mapuja to Gaijatra was known as Sambatsara, which means gestation period. Later, that period, that Sambatsara period was extended three more months. Actually, not exactly three months, two, two months, few days were extended. Then it became annual year. Sambatsara literally means period of gestation. Used to be only nine months, around nine months. But the meaning changed when Vedic people reinterpreted, reinterpreted that local culture, local uh, custom of uh, cow ritual, the Sambatsara, as solar ritual. Monsoon ritual changed into solar cult. Vedic people were sun worshippers. Vedic people were sun worshippers. They came from Afghanistan before they entered India. They were in Haravati, around Haravati River in Afghanistan. And snow melt was their main source of water. Their main problem was they were scared of their nightmare, as a matter of fact, or nightmare. The, the nightmare of India and uh, Nepal's nightmare is doubt. But the nightmare of the people of Afghanistan is too much snow. Have you heard uh, of the story of Ima? Ima is the uh, um, go between between Ahuru Mazda and the people. Ima, Sanskrit Yama, Yamaraja, Yama, found out that there will be very heavy snow. Right? So he carried all the species inside the house. And then it rained and rained so much that the entire world was covered with the snow. And periodically he used to see if the snow stopped through the window, periodically he checked if the uh, snow has been stopped. But it is still still snowing all the time. All right? Ima was the protector god. Ima means Yama. Same god Yama, same god Yama came to India, turned into the god of death. And there is a very good reason. Yama was the god of south in Afghanistan. Yama or Ima was the god of south. Because in Afghanistan, southern part of Afghanistan is fertile. Northern part of Afghanistan too cold. Nothing grows it in there. Northern part of Afghanistan is almost like a hair. Southern part of the uh, Afghanistan is, is heaven. Uh, this was the idea. The Vedic people, when Vedic people came, they carried that idea into India. But within few few centuries, within few decades, their idea changed. After they settled down, 
after they settled down in India, the heaven now is located in Uttara, north. The Sanskrit word is Uttara. Uttara literally means upper. But same word also means north. I live in north means I live upper upper hill. It closely related to Himalayan geography. But in even in the Rig Veda and other Vedic texts, Uttara always means close to heaven. But south is hell. Because south is downward. It is human always think that where is the heaven? Heaven is had to be really up, right? That idea, northern part is heaven, southern part is hell, we still have in Newar. Newars call it Thani and Agoni, and Vedic people call it Uttara and Adara. Different word, same idea. The, what is happening that these Vedic people came to South Asia, they adopted local culture and then they reinterpreted. Reinterpreted inventing story. They are very good creating story. And people in India were fascinated with story. We are still fascinated with story. If a Brahmin tells you a beautiful story, oh yeah, Vishnu's bhajan, Vishnu's uh, worship on this and that day, or Shiva's worship this and that day, Shiva Pratakatha, Shiva Mahatma, there are so many Mahatmas. Right? Sometimes even great scholar has difficulty distinguishing what is Mahatma and what is history. That is the main problem that we have. Okay? I will begin I will begin with an example of a Sanskritization of Navar culture. I will I will present uh, one example of Sanskritization, one example of geographical in, impact on South Asian culture, and then I will give one example of monsoon culture. Okay, one example of Sanskritization. Indra, the standing figure is Indra dated 741, and it is inscribed, that inscription, it refers to uh, Yara Puni, exactly when we worship Indra. Uh, uh, what is the other, other word for Yara Puni? Indra Jatra. Right? So it means already in Lichibi period, people were having Indra Yatra kind of festival, right? But Indra, same day, on the day of Yara Puni, on the day of Indra Yatra, Indra is worshipped in this, in this form. A scarecrow, as a matter of fact, scarecrow, and on top of the scarecrow, they place Indra's face. We know this is Indra. We know this head belongs to Indra because always that face have uh, um, horizontal eye. Shiva has vertical eye, but Indra always has horizontal eye. This is Indra too. During Indra Yatra, this kind of icon of Indra is displaced all over Kathmandu, right? We have, we have seen many times. This iconography Indra, only in Kathmandu, nowhere in India we see this iconography in Indra. This is typical, typical Kathmandu Valley iconography. And what is the origin of this iconography? We know that it derived from scarecrow. This is the origin of Indra's iconography. And this is why 
this God is not simply Indra. Indra, right? Indra. Indra, the scarecrow ancestor, as a matter of fact. So this is a little bit about the Gopala culture. Usually, we study history or culture with the classification of Hinduism and Buddhism, particularly anthropologists. Before they say anything, they like to know whether this is Hindu and Buddhist. And they classify, oh, okay, Durga is yes, Hindu. And then when they see Buddhists also worship Durga, wow, Buddhists also worship Durga. And same Kubera, Ganesha, goes on and on. They're the one who uh, classify this, this God is Hindu or Buddhist. And they, they like to see what's happening here. As a matter of fact, they are not Hindu, they are not Buddhist. They are people, this, uh, some of the gods, like Indra, this is Scarecrow Indra, pre-Buddhist, pre-Hindu. Pre -Hindu. This is why uh, during Yonakmuni, uh, Buddhist and uh, Hindu have no problem worshiping Indra. But this could say, I don't know, this is Indra is Hindu God, I'm not going to worship it. Right? But they do not say, they have no problem because this Indra Aju originated from pre Buddhist, pre Hindu culture. But I see always helpful if we study Nepali or Indian culture as part of geographical, uh, uh, part of geography and part of climate or uh, weather. Indian subcontinent or South Asia is almost like a wall city. It's a huge wall, Himalayan wall, and then another wall of the Hindu Kush. Monsoon is local phenomena of South Asia. Monsoon rain doesn't go to Tibet. Monsoon rain doesn't go to Afghanistan either. There are plenty of gods who are worshipped in this subcontinent, but not other side of the Himalaya, not other side of the Hindu Kush. Right? The sign. Dasai is celebrated always southern, southern part of the Himalaya. Once we are other side of the Himalaya, northern side of the Himalaya, Dasai is not important. Dasai is important to us because it is, Dasai means the end of the mantra. Dasai is the uh, time for harvest. Right? So Durga worship for me, is not exactly Hindu. We are worshiping autumn, the goddess of autumn. This is why Durga is also known, known as Sarat in, in Sanskrit. I believe that we always, always need to keep in our mind, mind that most of our, most of our cultural activity is related to monsoon. All these Navar festivals, Designed to, designed to make monsoon rain secure. Monsoon is extremely unpredictable things. Once the monsoon doesn't arrive, we have difficulty surviving. Right? This, this is one example of our climate. Another example, another example that I have is the Uttara and the other thing, Thani and the Kumani. Northern side of the Kathmandu, always called Thani. And we still have Tahiti. Tahiti means, Tahiti means northern fountain. Kohiti means southern fountain. And Tahiti, Kohiti, Thani, Kumani, even Tamil is derived from 
Nevari word for tab, tabai, right? Tabai means northern, northern Buddhist monastery. And exactly same idea we find in, in the Vedic literature in Rig Veda, right? And heaven, for us, heaven is always located in the north. In Vedic literature too, heaven is lived, uh, uh, located uh, in the north. In, in the Veda, they have a very interesting ritual. Uh, ritual of traveling on the bank of a Sindhu river. They travel from the low, uh, actually not Sindhu, Saraswati river. They travel from the Saraswati river where Saraswati river disappeared. Saraswati river come from the Himalaya and then there is a place called Binasana where Saraswati river disappeared. They start walking north for about six months. And by the time the monsoon rains comes, they reach to the Himalaya. Right? And then believe, they believe that once they are in the Himalaya, they are closer to the north, closer to the heaven. Same thing we do, Nevars. Nevars, on the day of uh, Gaijatra, want to be in Goshain Kunda. Right? Goshain Kunda is Sanskritized name. Nevar name, Nevar name, Nevar name is what? Uh, Shiluti. Right? Shiluti actually river tree. Silu is river tree, river in tree. Same, same idea that Vedic people have too. The Vedic Sanskrit word for Saraswati is Raksha Prasharana. That means river in tree. Saraswati river was known to Vedic people as a river in tree. Upside down tree. Right? It's upside down and all the branches is considered the branches of the river. They visualize a tree on Saraswati River. Right? That is river in tree. That idea still we have in Nevari, and this is why Koshan Kunda is known as Si Ruti. Si means tree, Ruti means river. And Si Ruti, the main source of Si Ruti, located in the Himalayan mountain. Uh, 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 Vedic people also travel from Binasana to Himalayan mountain to reach closer to heaven. This example tells us that Nevar culture is ancient culture. Very likely, Nevar culture is pre -Vedic. The heaven is located in the north. It's local idea. Vedic people, before they came to India, they believed that heaven is located in the south. Because in Afghanistan, southern section of Afghanistan is warmer and fertile. Right? But just after they entered in, in, in India, they changed their idea. They learned the idea from local people. People like Nevars. People like proto Nevars. And this concept of north and the south, Thani Koni is interesting because in Indus Valley, dead body is buried almost all the time. North facing to uh, the head facing to the north. The head facing to the north. And in Sanskrit, the upper body Upper body is called Uttaranga, upper body, and lower body is called Adaranga. In the sense, in the Wari, this is Thani, upper body, and Kuni is after, uh, lower body. Right? So, the idea of Thani and Kuni may go back to Indus Valley, Indus Valley civilization. And this is why their dead body is buried with head facing to north most of the time.
flag worship. Never even now, perform flag worship. Bianja Nakiwo. One day before, one day before Gai Jatra. Gai Jatra means the end of the end of the cow calendar. Gai Jatra means end of the cow calendar. End of the cow calendar means end of Sambachara. In the gestation period. And the Rig Veda clearly said that at the end of Sambachara, frog starts croaking. This is why I'm so much interested on frog. This is why I carry frog all the time. Frogs tell, tell us who we are. Yes, now the frog worship is after the monsoon rain, but in ancient time, Frog worship day was the beginning of rainy season. Beginning of rainy season. Even in the Buddha's time, a uh, Buddhist monk started rainy season in Sarvam Shukla Purnima, Sarvani, uh, 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 just before, one day before Gai Jatra. Right? But now the Sarvani, Sarvam Shukla Purnima, is almost end of the, uh, 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 end of the uh, rainy season. Very luckily, we have been feeding uh, uh, frogs even before the Vedic people came to India. And the Vedic people believe that frogs give them cows. In the frog hymn, frogs start croaking, it rains, uh, uh, Brahmins start chanting uh, Rig Vedic hymn, right? And at the end of that, uh, uh, Manduga Sukta, the author of the Manduga Sukta said that, O oh, frogs, last year you gave us plenty of cows, this year too give us plenty of cows. Right? And you, you need to remember that this is the end of the gestation. This is the end of the gestation of a cow. When frogs start croaking, the cows start giving birth to calves. I knew most of the things long before I gave a lecture in Social Science Baha in 2000, 2013. But I did not know that how Sambhatsara related to cow, how Sambhatsara related to the conception of a cow, because cow can conceive any time. But when I talked to one of the professors in my university, uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, he said that the cow of the nomad may, nomads may be different. They may conceive in autumn and give birth to, give birth to uh, calf in rainy season. He said that. And so in that lecture, I said that nomad, nomadic cow, the cow of the nomads, different from the cows that we have. That's not true. What I discovered immediately after I went back, after giving that lecture, I discovered that these ancient people kept their bulls separate from the cow most of the time. But when Kartika months come, they release the bull so that the cow can conceive in the month of Kartika. Right? Once the cow conceives in the month of Kartika, it is almost sure that the cow give birth at the beginning of the beginning of the uh, monsoon. That is sambhatsa. That is sambhat. That is period of gestation. Right? But the meaning of the that sambhatsa change when Vedic people aged two more months, and that that is the beginning of become sambhat. I will talk about it soon. This is why quite often in this valley. She uh, 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 painted spot. We see the, the cow tied to the tree most of the time. The the bull. We see the bull almost always. Almost always, the bull is shown tied to the tree. I have three examples tied to the tree. Again, it's a big bull.
whenever I see this big bull in Indus Valley, see, I've been seen in Indus Valley bulls, see, they always see the very masculine bull, very, very big. Whenever I see the image of a, a bull in Indus Valley, I remember my name. My name is Gautama. It is derived from Sanskrit word Gautama. Gautama literally means excellent bull. <laughs> but Gautama is the offspring of excellent bull. Yes, I got my name from Siddhartha Gautama. But Siddhartha Gautama himself is named after the excellent bull. <laughs> right? So, it seems that even in Buddha Sakyamuni's time, we are the children of the excellent bull who are there. And that excellent bull is repeatedly shown in, in, this, in this valley seal and in this valley uh, painting. This much is clear, clear to you that a uh, Mahat Puja is the beginning of the cow calendar and the Gai Jatra the end of the cow calendar. It was called Sambatsara and as a matter of fact the Sambat is the, uh, is the abbreviation of Sambatsara. Right? Sambat is the abbreviation of Sambatsara. You can decline Rama, 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 right? Some Sanskrit you can decline every single word, Gautama, Gautama, Gautama. But Sambat, you cannot decline it. Sambat, 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 no. Sambat is abbreviation. And therefore, yes, Sambat Sara, you can decline it. Sambat Sara, Sambat Sara, Sambat Sara. But Sambat is derivation, abbreviation, and therefore it remains Sambat all the time. <laughs> okay? So, most of the thing that I really wanted to say is uh, almost, almost complete. Now, let us watch. Mapuja closely. Okay, the name, Sanskrit name of this fruit, Sanskrit name of this fruit is Jambara. Jambara. Jambara is also a name of a god. I will come back to this slide again, okay? Jambara is also a name of the god. This is Jambara. This God represents that fruit. Okay? But another name of this God is Dimba. Dimba means fetus. This is a fetus God for sure. Many places in Sadamala and many places in Sanskrit, this God is known as Dimba. Fetus. Fetus God. In Mapuja, this god is represented by the egg-shaped fruit because that, that fruit represents the fetus. We are, we all Navars are the kids of cosmic cow. Yes, cow conceived on that day, but same way the cosmic cow, the sky mother, also conceived us on that day. Mapuja. The New Year celebration is actually communal birthday, communal gestation birthday. What is your birthday? When you are born or when you are conceived? If you think that you are born immediately after conceived, that Mapuja is our birthday. We are celebrating communal birthday. We all know our is celebrating our birthday on the day of the Mapuja. Usually, Indian god, Nepalese god, wear earring, but this god, Dimba, who represents fetus, doesn't wear any earring. Because a child is, uh, the, 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 the ear rope is pierced only at the age of six. A child starts wearing earring only after six, because this is a child god, fetus god. No, no, yay. no uh, ornament of the. He wears all variety of ornament, but without a. And he the only god. Believe me, he the only god in entire iconography who doesn't wear any earring. 
because he is a dimba, he is a fetus. Right? That fetus, God continued to survive until the age of fifth, and then he began to wear, uh, uh, wear the earring. This much for <coughs> Nepal Sambhat. Vikram Sambhat is the extension of that, uh, that the cow calendar. They call it Gabamayana, the, the part of the, the, the walk of the cows. They kept that uh, name, Gabamayana ritual, but they extended the, the, the ritual two more months. They, they clearly said in Vedic literature, we need to extend two more months because when you perform this solar ritual, Vishubhat, the equinox, the day of equinox had to be in the center. When you have ritual lasting only for nine months, you cannot have equinox in the center, right? The earlier Gavamayana ritual, earlier Sambhatsara ritual, for well, only nine months. No way you can make equinox in the middle of the ritual. But in extended Gavamayana ritual, extended cow ritual, they always try to make the ritual, the equinox in the middle of that ritual. They viewed, they viewed solar movement, the Vedic people viewed their solar movement in terms of the giant state. The cosmic god changed their food. Cosmic god stands extending food like this. Tribhikrama. His name is Tribhikrama because he walks three steps. Vikrama means steps. Right? We usually think that Vikrama is the name of the king. No, Vikrama is the three steps. Three steps of Vishnu morning, daytime, and evening time. Right? Every morning, Every morning is the beginning of Vikrama. Every morning is beginning of time. So Vikrama means beginning of time. And this is why they name this particular era as Vikrama Shambhat. In Bhaktapur, even now, they have this uh, uh, festival what is the name? Vishaketu Biske Jatra. Biske Jatra is celebrated on the day of on the day of Equinox. But Equinox always changes. Every, every 75 years, Equinox change to one day. Shift to one day. Right? So actually Baisha Eggate is not the day of Equinox. It's about 21 days earlier because it has been changed. But we know that in an earlier time, this uh, biscuit jatra is performed on the day of equinox, because biscuit itself is nevari uh, or uh, for equinox, bishika. Ancient classical nevari war is bishika. That bishika become bishika and Vishwaketu, Biscuit, gradually chain. But ancient Nevari Thyashapus, ancient Nevari Chronicle, he always said on the day of Vishika, this festival was performed. Vishika festival was performed. And if you change classical Nevari dictionary, the Sanskrit word Vishubhat, Vishubhat is equinox. Sanskrit word Vishubhat is translated as Vishika. So clearly, we are celebrating equinox. And that equinox is important because the creation began on the day of equinox. The very first sunrise, very first sunrise of the cosmos happened on the day of equinox. When the day and the night, when the day and the night was separated. According to Vedic story, as I told you that Vedic people are very good in telling story. According to the Vedic story, the earth and the heaven was compact. 
because heaven and earth is compact, there was no space for creation. Right? And the Indra found out that this is not good. For, for creation, we need to separate heaven and earth. So he separated heaven and earth and he erected the pillar. He erected the cosmic pillar. Right? And so the heaven and the earth is separated. Immediately after the Indra separated heaven and earth, very first sunrise began. Because there was no space, sun could not rise. Sun could not go through the Vikrama. Right? The very first step of this Vikrama was, uh, uh, was not there. But immediately after the Biscuit Jatra began, the Vikrama begins. And this is why Vikrama Shambhav is called Vikrama Shambhav. You know what? This is all the, the Biscuit Jatra, Nevari or Bishika, is all these things coming from Nevar, Nevar sources. But this is also good for Indian history. There are so many great Indian historians never thought that this Bikram somebody is related to uh, Equinox. They always look for a, a king uh, whose name is Bikrama. Bikrama Aditya, oh no, 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 this is Bikrama Aditya, he is himself is Chandragupta. Oh no, 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 this is uh, earlier than Chandragupta, but Chandragupta named himself as a Bikrama. The many, many stories, right? They never, never thought that Bikrama is. Uh, 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 is related to that equinox. Sanskrit word is Bishu or Bishubar. Even now in Kerala, Bishu is celebrated, Bis that equinox is celebrated exactly when we have Biscuit Jatra in Bhaktapur. Vikram Sambhat begins exactly on that day in Kerala too. And they, they have a festival called Bishu. Okay? All these things you will read in my written version of uh, uh, my book. It is good that you have this written version. There are plenty of things that I can I cannot say in one lecture, but uh, I'm really glad that I got a chance to give this lecture. Thank you. Oh, wow. That was quite a treat. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Ajahn That was a very captivating uh, lecture. And uh, we have uh, copies of the lecture uh, that are being distributed outside. And as the professor said, uh, it will serve as a very good complement to what you just heard, because the, the lecture is obviously in written form. And uh, this was a visual treat. And I think the way that uh, you presented your argument uh, certainly uh, adds, for those of us who are lucky to be in this room today, uh, the reading the uh, lecture itself will be uh, uh, an additional uh, a bonus. Uh, thank you once again for all of you, uh, to all of you for being here on such a, a difficult occasion. And thank you, Professor Vasachari, for accepting our invitation and traveling so far to be with us. And I think like you know, you, you've done us justice uh, by this lecture. And I think the audience also appreciates uh, the, uh, the, the privilege of uh, listening to you. Uh, please join us for uh, tea outside, and uh, Professor Bazuchari will also be joining you uh, for tea. Thank you.